In this video, I'm going to teach you how to add some really realistic lighting and shading to 2D layers all in After Effects. All right, so we're going to cover adding the 3D lighting and shading to this ball using layer styles and then creating these reflections for the pink and yellow triangles. And of course, a couple of other techniques for the pros who stick around to the very end. So we're going to start off in this comp and we're going to focus only on this circle. Now everything in here is a shape layer and for all of the other layers like the triangles, I've created this gradient just by adding the effect gradient ramp. And that's a very easy way to add a gradient so you can easily adjust it using these controllers that the effect gives you. And gradient ramp is applied to every one of these shapes. And also this project file is available to download for free down in the description. And we're going to start off by using layer styles to make this ball look more 3D. And I have to shout out three motion designers who've inspired me or told me directly how they use layer styles. And those are Steve Elegant, Johan Eriksson, and Hugh Vu. So to start off, let's select our circle. And we're going to right click on it, go up to layer styles. And the first one we're going to choose is inner shadow. Now adding that puts that under the layer styles under its parameters here. So let's open up inner shadow and let's drag this up a little bit further so we can see a bit more what's going on. Let's leave it opacity at 75%. The distance we want to increase to around 85 and size we want to increase way more up so it really softens it. And let's go up to about 100. Now we've got some nice soft lighting, but we want the angle to be coming from the top left. So let's adjust our angle. Around 320-ish works well. And this creates a nice area of shadow and highlight. And if you are only going to use one layer style, I would use this one and then just increase the size way up even further. So it's even softer and a bit more realistic. But we don't need ours to be that soft because we are going to address that with some other layer styles where we're going to get some more colors involved. So the next one we're going to add is inner glow. So let's right click again, layer styles and add inner glow. Let's close inner shadow and open up inner glow. And for this one, we want to increase the choke to around 20%. Of this one, we want to increase the size from 5 to 100. Again, to make it nice and soft. And let's increase the choke a little bit to bring it in from the edges slightly. I think 20 is fine for us. And let's change the color from this pale yellow to a nice minty color that's just a bit greener than our circle. And hit OK. And this one is much subtler. Of course, you can flick on and off your layer styles over here. Now, this inner glow is pretty subtle. And the main reason I'm using this is, well, for two reasons to add a bit more of that green color in, but mainly because I don't want this bottom right area in shadow to get too dark when we add our next layer styles, which is bevel and emboss. Add that by right clicking, layer style, bevel and emboss. Let's hide in a glow, open up bevel and emboss. Let's change its size way up and around 200, I think is pretty good. Once you get too far, you get this sort of pointy shape in the middle, but I think just over 200 should be fine. And we wanna change the shadow color away from this black and we actually want to choose a bright pink because that is on a multiply blending mode and that will affect our minty color underneath and the pink on top of the mint creates this nice blue which is similar to our background but of course you can change this to any color and you'll get some nice interesting results let's stick with pink now this is looking very close very close indeed we're going to add one more layer style that is gradient overlay so let's again select layer styles gradient overlay initially when we add it it looks like a total mess and to fix that, we are going to change the blending mode from normal to overlay. So we don't get that pink muddy color in there anymore. And I'm just going to change the angle to minus 17. Now this one is really subtle. I can barely see what's happening when I'm adding it on top of here. It doesn't really look like much. But if we scale it down, we can start to see what's happening. We've just got a gradient going across our layer. When it's very small, we can see it in the middle. When we turn it up, it covers our whole circle. We turn on and off, there's really not too much of a difference. But to me, this makes it a bit more cohesive and gives it a bit more saturation in those middle areas. It makes it feel more like a sphere than maybe a sort of very rounded beef patty sort of shape. And just from these four layer styles, you can create some really nice, wonderful 3D looking looks. And you could maybe even just use one or two or a different combination of each one. But I wanted to show you these four ones and how they work. And I think in this combo, they really work well together. And now we're going to add some really nice, cool and realistic looking reflections from the triangles on either side. And if you're finding these techniques useful, please give this video a like. It really helps me a bunch. Well, it makes me very happy, first of all. And it also helps me grow the channel so that I can keep providing these videos every single week. And if you don't want to miss out, consider subscribing as well. That also makes me happy. Now onto the reflections. Let's close down our circle properties because we don't need to worry about that. And for our triangle pink, we're going to select this and duplicate it. 
and I'm going to rename it triangle pink reflection because we always label our layers. And I'm going to add the effect Gaussian blur. And I'm going to blur it to 150, which actually looks like a nice glow at the moment. And then I'm going to add the effect set matte. And we're going to take the matte from layer number five, which is our circle. And now we can see that this layer is only visible inside our circle layer. So we toggle it on and off, it's only just casting a light on this circle here. Now at the moment it's pretty subtle. So what we can do is just nudge it further towards the circle. There we are. And because this isn't parented to our circle in any way, this just stays there next to a triangle. So when our circle isn't near that triangle, there's no reflection on it. But as it gets closer, it gets more and more of that pink light reflected onto it. Now this is looking pretty good, pretty realistic. But there's one way that we can get an even more realistic reflection, and that is just by changing the layer order of the Gaussian blur and the set matte. So if we put the blur above the set matte, and let's zoom in so we can get a much better look. Now at the moment, this is really subtle. So let's move our pink reflection even closer. We can see that now it's applying the set matte first and then blurring it. So because there's less of our color towards the edges, we can see a bit more of the original color of our circle near the edges here. Then of course we get a bit of a glow coming out of our circle anyway. So an easy way to remove that is to just duplicate our set matte effect and put that below the Gaussian blur. And now we can sort of move our reflection back a little more to make it a bit more subtle. So now we can see our reflection is a bit more of a rounded shape rather than when we turn our first set matte layer on, which is this flat gradient across the right. And of course this has a bit more you know, contrast and you might prefer that look, but if you want a bit more subtle and realistic, this method of reflection might be the way to go. And of course, if you want it to feel like it's a bit more glowing and this light is bouncing off this circle back out into the world, you can turn off our second set matte because it really is subtle and you're not really gonna notice it here. Of course, it isn't really 100% realistic because this pink isn't glowing in the first place, but somehow its reflection is glowing. But you know what? This is animation, baby. Stuff doesn't need to make sense if it looks good. Now we can just do the same for the yellow triangle. There, now we've got two nice realistic looking reflections and you can also change the blending mode of these reflections if you want. Maybe set to screen or add where it simply lightens the circle. That is up to you as well. Done. Now to using layer styles on pre-comped elements. And this is a bit of a pro technique just for those who stay to the end. And this is just a great way to add more shading and lighting to complex elements that you've maybe already animated. And here we've got two versions of the chili character from my intro. And we're going to add layer styles to one of them just so we can see the contrast between them. So we're going to add layer styles to this one on the left. And the first one that we're going to add is outer glow. This is one that we didn't use before. And you know, it's pretty much the opposite of inner glow. It just has a little glow that comes outwards. You can see it's really subtle at the moment, just this you know, pale line sort of haloing the outside of our layer. So let's open that up and let's change its opacity up to 100%. So we can see all of it because you know, that's what we're paying for. And let's increase the size to maybe 120, 125. That's looking nice. And for the color, we can just simply get the eyedropper and select this pale pink here. I think it's great to select the colors you are using from the artwork itself so you don't have too many outside colors coming in and you know you can run into trouble if you're trying to restrict your color palette, which you know I think looks a little bit nicer. So even though we're adding more colors with this glow, at least it's you know coming from a, a source close to home. And now I've got a glow coming from the alpha channel of this layer from all the transparent edges. And that means that we can go into our comp Let's just turn on this extra rectangle that I've added doing a quick rotation. And now we can see the layer style is applied to that rectangle as well. So whatever the edges of this comp is, it is gonna add an outer glow to it. Let's go in and turn that off because random flying rectangle, that looks ridiculous. Next, we're gonna add an inner glow. Again, turn that opacity up to 100 and size. We wanna increase that to maybe 75-ish. At the moment, it is looking like a really intense halo like it's really glowing and angelic so it's talking to us from beyond the grave and about to share with us some words of wisdom and i don't really like how it's really just brightening up and overexposing our dark lines here i don't mind a bit of you know shading on our strokes but here it looks way too much i think we can all agree on that so let's change its blending mode from screen to overlay so now it's only affecting those dark areas very very subtly and let's change that color to that pink again or maybe we pick the yellow this time there we are, that looks a bit warmer and a bit more on brand for this chili. And there we have it, you can see that makes a pretty big difference over our version without any shading and you know, we just added gradients with really no effort at all. We use this technique wisely, this can definitely be overdone. So, you know, consider yourself warned. And again, this project file is available to download for free in the description. Have a tinker around, see how this is all put together and apply these techniques to your own work. I would love to see what you make. If you'd like to learn animation and motion design techniques, I've got a playlist of some of the best tutorials on this channel for you to take a look at. I'll see you in the next one.